Hello and welcome to another episode of RC Printer. I'm your host Jordan Visco and today we're going to be doing some work on our ski ride and we're going to do a video about something I know a lot of people are really excited about and that is upgrading your ski ride from the regular gear drive to a belt driven model. So I'm just going to show you one way of doing it today. There are a number of different ways of doing this. So each to their own and do what you think is best. But this seems to be one of the ways that's definitely the most common and most foolproof. All right, so the original ski drive transmission here works with a uh, pinion gear which meshes with this Traxxas spur gear which then is attached directly to a herringbone 3D printed gear here which matches to another 3D printed herringbone gear. This one is keyed right onto the drive shaft. The drive shaft has these two sprockets on it and that's what's gonna drive your track. Now one thing we could do is just remove this piece right here, remove these gears there, put a belt drive pinion on here and a belt drive spur gear on there, connect the two with a belt and you're good to go. And you can see a lot of people are doing that online. The problem with that is that you're not gonna have a tensioner. The only tension setting you'll have is the uh, motor tension setting. And when you're running a belt drive, belt tension is very important. So it's nice to have some sort of a uh, fully adjustable tensioner and so we're going to install one of those today. So to make these changes we're going to need a few new parts. The first thing we're going to need is a uh, belt drive pinion here like this one. This is a 20 tooth pinion. It also has a 5 millimeter bore in the middle. Now that's not right for the motor that we have. The motor that we have has a 3.175 millimeter shaft which is the most common you're going to find on a 540 motor. You can find uh, some with a 5 millimeter shaft though so if you find one that's great. But if not then you're going to need a sleeve reducer like this one here and so this takes uh, the inside from five millimeters and turns it to a 3.175 so all you have to do is slide it inside here and line the hole up with uh, one of the set screw holes like that and then when I tighten her down uh, it tightens through that hole and it won't come out and now I can fit that on so that's the first thing you need there. Next you're going to need something like this which is a belt drive spur. Now this one uh, I got in a kit with this pinion and so they both have five millimeter holes. Unfortunately what we need is a 10 millimeter hole because that's the size of our drive shaft here and I'm not planning on redoing our drive shaft today. So what I'm going to do in this case is uh, bore this one out with my drill press. Um, you can actually find 10 millimeter bore belt drive spur gears out there so if you can find one of those that'd be ideal. Uh, but if not in a quick pinch you can you can definitely uh, use one of these and drill it out. Another option would be 3D printing one of these. Um, so in the mod files you can find a whole bunch of different tooth uh, spur gears for belt drives and so you can 3D print one of those if you want as well. You're also going to need a belt. Um, so this one here is a 200 millimeter belt and that's the recommended size to go with. Uh, depending on the size of your spur and pinion you might need a slight modification to that. Uh, but in general 200 millimeters is a good place to start. This is also a six millimeter wide belt and uh, the pinion spur and belt are all GT2 teeth. Now aside from those pieces you're also going to need some 3D printed pieces. So I have a new frame here. Um, you can see the motor mount for the frame is actually built right into it instead of uh, right here where the motor mount is a separate piece. And so one issue with that is that while well, this is printed out of PLA, I want my motor mount generally printed out of something a little more heat resistant. So I've 3D printed this um, little motor shim that'll go in behind there and this is printed out of PETG so it should be a lot more uh, heat resistant. Um, I've just done a really thin one at two millimeters and I think that'll get my spacing about right but uh, we'll see once we get her together. And then these right here, these are the 3D printed pieces for the tensioner and uh, you're gonna need some screws to throw together as well. So our first task here is just to disassemble all this and then we're gonna go ahead and remove the front frame and uh, all the suspension pieces and get that front frame replaced. And then I'll meet you back here in a moment when we're ready to actually install that belt drive. Out with the old, in with the new. All right, there we are, we got our new belt drive frame installed. Uh, I should say this frame is the one that is named mod underscore J Latorn 86 underscore frame dash V3 underscore belt underscore drive. There's a couple different modified frames in there, so uh, make sure you're using the right one. They can be kind of tricky to find. All right, front ends back together. Now we can work on this belt drive. First thing we're going to do is remove this old pinion. And we'll put the motor in place here with this shim. I think about 10 millimeter screws should do it. Okay, we don't need to tighten it up tight yet. All right, so we want it loose enough that we can still kind of shift it around a bit. And we'll throw our pinion on. Okay, 
Right now it's time for our metal belt drive spur gear and we're going to go ahead and try and drill this out to 10 millimeters so it'll slide on that shaft. Not too bad. Alright, there we go. We got our hole drilled out and it slides nicely onto our drive shaft like that. The next thing we need to do is decide which bracket cover we're going to use here. So there's this one, which looks like this, and there's this one, which looks like this, and they're pretty much exactly the same. The only real major difference between the two is that this one has this support piece, which is going to give it just a little bit of extra support uh, once it gets installed, whereas this one just uses the tensioner arm here um, as the support. So uh, it's up to you which one you want to do. This one here is going to get this bearing that just pops right into this little location. You can put a little drop of hot glue on the outside here just to hold it in place if you wanted. This one here um, has a little recess in the back where you're going to pop your bearing in so it's going to hold it just a little bit more secure. Now these things are just freely designed for uh, our use by the community members so um, they're not perfect but uh, you can get them to work. And one of the issues with them is that uh, these pulleys actually don't fit perfectly so when we add this little spacer block here, which is going to go in behind, and it's going to get mounted here, um, there actually isn't quite enough space on the 60 tooth pulley for it to turn nicely in this location here without rubbing. You can see here, here's a, a 3D printed version of a 60 tooth pulley, and the flange on the outside here is maybe like a 2 millimeter flange on the edge, whereas this metal one has like a 5 millimeter flange, so it's definitely way too big. So it's definitely a couple of millimeters too big to fit in here nicely uh, with this support piece on top of it. So we could either use a 3D printed pulley or we can go ahead and use our metal one here and just grind down the edge a little bit. The 3D printed one here is about 40 millimeters. The metal one's about 44, so I'm going to need to knock about 2 millimeters off this guy in order to have it fit properly. And then the last thing I need is an M4 set screw. And because I'm attaching to a 3D printed shaft, it would be nice to have a set screw that could go all the way through here. So the distance in the middle is uh, 10 millimeters, and the thickness of the outside here is about 7. So I want about a 17 millimeter long set screw. Um, and I don't have one like that. So what I'm going to do is take one of these 20 millimeter long uh, M4 screws, and then I'm going to cut the head off at about 17 millimeters, and then I'm going to take my Dremel and I'm going to cut a channel in the end of the bolt, and that's going to allow me to use a flathead screwdriver to install it, and I should be able to make my own set screw. That's the perfect length for this. Now I could just use like this, which is a 16 millimeter M4 screw, uh, but the problem is, is the head's going to stick out a bit, and that's actually going to have a good chance of running into this support piece once it gets installed, so it's best uh, to have a set screw in there that doesn't have a head on it. Alright, there we go. We've ground a couple of millimeters off the outside, so we're much closer now to the size of the 3D printed one. So we're going to be able to fit on here and have it fit within the bracket, no problem. So next thing we're going to do is choose which one of these we want to use. This one's called the Hobby Print RC Tensioner Belt Support, and this one is called Seminator Tensioner Bracket Low Profile. To me, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. But this one's a little newer, so that's the one we're going to install today. So the first thing we have to do is figure out exactly where it's going to go so we can drill some holes. So we're going to attach this rear bracket piece, just like that, and then we'll add our bearing, we'll slide it onto the shaft. Now unfortunately the holes in the back don't line up perfectly with this little hole right here, so we can't really use that as a guide, but what we want to do is kind of have this come out uh, straight like it is right now. And then we're going to drill some holes that are going to accept some M3 screws. So I've got a drill bit here. This is just over two and a half millimeters, which should thread a three millimeter screw just fine. And we're going to come through this hole and then through the hole on the back of this bracket piece. And we'll drill a hole right through the frame. Like that. And now we can take a 10 millimeter M3 screw like that and secure it in place. All right, so that one's secure. So now we can go ahead and drill the other two holes. Again, this one here isn't going to completely line up with the back one, so we are going to have to drill it out a little bit. Just like that. 
and we can also drill out this one here now. Just like that. This one can be kind of tricky to put in while this is installed, so you can remove the front cover if you just so that we can get this guy installed. Now we can actually install our belt and our pulley and get our set screw in place. Alright, there you go. You can see the set screw will now bypass that bracket. So now we can reinstall our front piece. And we can add our tensioner arm with a longer M3 screw. This one is about 30 millimeters in length. There we go. Now we can lock our motor into place. Like that. Now we're going to decide on the location for our tension pulley. We're going to want it not too tight right off the bat so that we can drive a screw in through here and just add tension as we push this up. We're going to pull that tensioner pulley um, into the belt. Now you can buy a tensioner pulley or you can make your own. Today we're going to make our own. And I'm going to do that by just putting together a couple of small bearings and sliding an M3 screw through them. So I'll figure out where my location is going to be. Right about there. Let's see if I can mark it a bit. Then I'll remove my tensioner arm temporarily. And I'll drill a hole where I want my tensioner to go. Just like that. Then I'm going to attach my tensioner pulley. And we'll test it out. Seems to be about right. Put our bracket back in place. Now I'm going to take a longer M3 screw. This is an M3 by 30, but you could use longer if you'd like. And we're going to drive it through here. And in that way, we can tighten it to add more tension. Or loosen it to release tension. So you don't want to add too much tension because you could end up bending your uh, shaft off your motor here, especially if you're using a 3.175 millimeter shaft motor. So careful with that. Now that we've got it all hooked up, it's time for a test. Turn it on. Lift her up. Running like a dream. Now over time this belt will loosen up. Oh, you can see it's already loosening up here. So we will need to tighten it. And so all we do is just push this screw forward here and try it again. Now all we have to do to finish it off is just put our body panels back on. So thanks so much for watching our demonstration of installing a belt drive on a ski ride RC snowmobile. We hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider giving us a like or subscribe. It really helps us out. And as always, if you're looking for cool ideas of 3D printed projects like this one to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, make sure you check us out at rcprinter.com.